I'm going to go ahead and let Tim introduce our guest, and we'll hear about a vocation. All right, thank you, President Leah. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. It's good to see you all here in 2024. Um, Leah did a nice job of explaining January's vocational month, and so the only thing I'll add to that is that we when we select all these sessions for January, we're also thinking about um, high school students because we record these and then we pass them on to the career center at the high school. So part of this is um, for us, part of it is for uh, high school students thinking about where they wanna go. Today's topic is around entrepreneurship and small business owners. And I'm gonna um, introduce Dylan Lawrence. So Dylan is the owner of the Holiday Inn and he's gonna tell you more about what, what that, uh, does for for dogs but from a very young age he's always had a love and special bond with dogs passion to be every canine's best friend has led him to pursue a career in the pet care industry since 2010 he's helped manage several doggy daycares grooming facilities and training centers always been a dream of his to own and operate his own doggy daycare and hotel so he's beyond excited to be on this journey with every human and dog that walks through our door woof (laughs) <laughs> Dylan, welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the website that you're waiting to go to the slides. Even though I'm a younger age, I'm not the most technologically savvy, <laughs> so I appreciate your help. Well, yeah, and I was telling Tim earlier, it's always kind of crazy, uh, beats my neighbor. And when he was talking to me about this and I connected with Tim, I always get a little bit of like imposter syndrome. I was like, what do I have to offer? What do I have to say? Um, I just hit my two year anniversary on December 1st of last year. Um, it was a 10 year journey to get to be my own boss. Um, I am not the person that took kind of that traditional route growing up, you know, going to school, getting your education, a college degree. That was something that was kind of forced and pressured on me. Um, and whenever family members or friends would ask like, oh, what do you want to do with a living? I'd say, I want to work with dogs. And they say, well, that's great. What do you really want to do? <laughs> um, and I was like, no, I, I want to work with animals. And the industry has really changed over the past 10 years, let alone 20 plus years, you know. Pets, uh, dogs were considered as pets. They're now considered family members. Um, So I feel really fortunate that as I was going on this journey, the market was really changing. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna open this so you guys can see some cute faces while I talk. Um, So, oh, while it loads. so yeah, so with that kind of not traditional route, I actually went to college for a year, realized it wasn't for me. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, you can get business degrees, you can get other certain things. For me, I wanted to work. I wanted to get the experience, which is why I worked my way from the bottom up at different facilities. I worked in training. I worked in grooming. Um, I really was trying to get a good encompass on what it takes to run a doggy daycare. Um And then through that process, you know, I've always been a little bit of a vocal. I have really high, um, I guess, justice, you know. So when it comes to the dogs, they always come first. When it comes to my team, they come first. Um, I don't see them as employees. I see them as teammates. And I think that's a really big difference of how I kind of run from how I was treated for the past 10 years. Um, I had several bump ins with the original owners of where I've worked, you know, saying, well, when you're your own boss, maybe you can make those decisions. Um, Because I didn't have the skill sets or the training or have the education that they did, they kind of made me feel like I didn't know what I was doing, um, which honestly just lit a fire under my butt to keep working harder. Um, So kind of how this process worked Um, is I was actually living in California, working at a facility when the pandemic hit. Um, My whole life as others completely changed. Um, I lost my job, I lost my home, to knock it off my relationship on top of that ended. So it was like this whole kind of cannonball of things happening. Um, But on the flip side, I was very thankful because it brought me back here. Um, I started working at a couple other facilities and I kept running into that same issue of like, I felt like the owners were putting profit above what the dog's needs were, what the team's needs were. Um, So it kind of got me to a breaking point where I had made a decision one day. It was a Sunday. I was either going to switch careers or I was going to be my own boss. 
Um, so I literally pulled up on Google doggy daycares for sale. And that's how this whole process started. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and happened to call a couple of places that were very vague. They didn't have the information. They didn't have pictures. Um, and ended up calling the place that I currently own, um, which I can give a little virtual tour. Um, I had called this place first and they said, hey, we're under contracts. We're so sorry. Um, it's no longer available. So I found a place in Hillsboro um, that I liked, but would need a lot more work for me to feel like I could kind of jump in and get going. Um, and so I was on the final day of having to either accept the other location or move on. And on that same day, I got a call saying, hey, this location is back on the market. Um, and so I, and the woman told me, uh, Teresa, she was a wonderful brokerage. She kind of held my hand throughout this whole process. Cause I really, again, did not know anything I was doing. I didn't even know at the time if I had the money, if I could even start this journey. Um, but I'm always the type of person that likes to swing for the fences and kind of see if things land. Um, and so she had called me and said, hey, you need to go look at this property today. You can't let them know that you're interested in buying it because their team doesn't know. So I had to kind of go incognito. Um, but for some reason, I didn't think to check the hours. They're closed in the middle of the day. So I showed up and luckily they were in the front office and let me in. But I only got to see the front lobby and then had to make my decision the next day. So I could see the photos that were um, on their website once I had a little bit more information, but I just went off a feeling. Um, it felt right. It felt like it was meant to be kind of how life has guided me, all the things I was doing. Um, so once I said I was interested, she said, okay, well, you have three days to make an official offer and then a week to come up with the money. Um, so then I went into panic mode because I was like, I don't, again, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I was willing to learn and to admit and to ask for help and say, hey, what are kind of the steps I need to do? Um, and one of the hardest things, and especially with me being very independent, was that asking for help. Um, I am, have always been a good saver. I had to pull out of my 401k. I had stocks, but I still didn't have enough to kind of put that deposit down to buy over this existing business. Um, so I had to go to family members and close friends, and I had to ask for help. I had to create a business proposal. Um, I had to as well. Let's see where the photos are. Thank you. Um, I had to kind of very quickly put together all the knowledge I had learned in 10 years. And oh, thank you so much. Nope. There we go. Perfect. Make my life easier. Thank you. We'll backtrack a little bit. Um, so I had to put together, you know, a business proposal. I put together the past 10 years. Um, here I can pause it. I at least got that figured out. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of had to all at once do all these big things and get everything together. Um, but one of the biggest things, and the bank uh, even told me why they were interested in me, is they had tons of people making offers. They had people that had other businesses. They had people that had the education, the background. But I actually had the experience because I spent those 10 years managing six other facilities, putting in the work, had the photos. Um, that, in addition with the original owners, um, they didn't want somebody that saw this as a cash cow. They didn't want someone who ran coffee shops and then all of a sudden was going to take care of living, breathing creatures. Um, so the fact that I came to them with that approach of, you know, this has been my passion, this is what I've been wanting to do, they took a risk on me and the bank took a risk on me. Um, so I'm very appreciative for that. Um, and so it took a total of eight months for everything to go through. It was a constant steps of not knowing if I was going to be approved. They say, okay, you're approved. Now it's 10 grand more. Now it's this much more. Now it's this. Hey, if you don't do this by the end of today, it's going to delay it by another month. Um, so I was working two jobs at the time. I was working as a dog daycare attendant and then training puppies. Um, so it was kind of a crazy uh just a whirlwind of everything happening at once to kind of get there and then not knowing until November that I had been approved to take over on December 1st of 2021. Um, and so let's see. So this was the, uh, the building originally. Um, I, within the past two years, have done a lot of renovations, most of it on my own with my sister. Um, so I kind of went in a little bit naive. I thought, oh, I'm taking over an existing business. This is going to be a walk in the park. It's going to be easy. Everything's set up for me. It was not. 
Um, the original owners are incredible. I love them to death. Um, they started the business in 1997, started in their house, then in a shed, then in a storefront, and then kind of transitioned to where this uh, business is now. Um, but everything was very uh, old school. So pen and paper, we had no check-in systems. They had people's credit card information on the back of post-it notes, like just not together. Like I didn't realize until I took over. Uh, which, mind you, December is our busiest time of year because that's when everybody travels for all the holidays, for New Year's. I took over a business that I was like, wow, I have a lot more work than I thought to do. Um, plus the pressures of when you are taking over and they've built that relationship and trust and that bond. I feel like for the first year and even until this past year, I've really had to prove in my or prove myself. Um, especially when people are trusting you to take care of their fur babies. It's a lot of responsibility. It's not, sometimes I wish that I wanted to do something a little bit easier where, you know, it's not, the stakes are, and this always sounds dramatic, but it is life or death. You know, we have dogs that get insulin. They have medication on certain hours. We have on average 50 to 85 dogs a day. Um, so that's a lot of dogs in a 7,500 square foot facility, open 24 seven with boarding, uh, daycares Monday through Fridays. Um, so it's a job where even when I'm off the clock, I'm never off the clock. Um, and that was something that I thought, you know, taking something over existing, oh, again, it'd be fairly easy to, to kind of manage and do all of that. Um, but yeah, definitely changing the hours. I took on teammates. I had to bring on my own. I started with a team of four, um, and now I have a team of 10. Um, so within two years, we've doubled in size. Um, so I feel very fortunate with that. But I'm one of those people um, that's a little bit crazy where... The original owners told me they always started projects and never finished because the business takes over for you. So I decided in the first year, I was gonna work extremely hard. I was gonna renovate, I was gonna expand, I was gonna do the software, I was gonna grow my team. <laughs> um, I worked 80 plus hour weeks. I would definitely not do it again in hindsight. Uh, mental health is something that's really important and making sure I'm well rested so I can be my best for the team and for the dogs. Um, but now that that's kind of out of the way, um, this was just the original logo. I did a whole rebranding and updated it to what you see right here. Um, same with the website, all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, I'll jump back. Let's see if I can figure this out. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, perfect. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so with that, you know, definitely some people think, and I have that same thing too, you know, you take over something existing, your work's going to be cut in half. That's not true. It was almost more work that I had to do to get to a place where I felt proud and confident for it to be, but also honoring the legacy that they did since 1997. Um, and so kind of within that, you know, I was very, you know, I was thinking I was going to start a franchise. I was going to do all these things. And I realized after the past two years of, barely getting time to myself that I just want to be the best at one location. I want to make sure that I know all the dogs that come into the facility that my teammates are taken care of. Um, another really important thing with being my own boss and kind of being mistreated. I was constantly told in this industry because it's seen as like a fast food job, you know, oh, well, you're replaceable. Anybody can do this. Um, I didn't have health care. I didn't have anything to kind of really build a future on. And so with doing this business, um, not only getting to do what I love every day, but actually taking care of people who want to do this and who want to work with dogs for a career. And how can I help facilitate that? I'll help if someone wants to do dog training, I'll help pay for that cert certification. Um, if they're interested in grooming, I have six years of that experience, helping them or showing them kind of the things I've done. Um, but definitely doing a set schedule for everybody, a 401k, health insurance, all these big things that you don't realize, it it costs an extreme amount of money. Um, I definitely am glad I did it, but it's going to set me back a little bit farther, um, kind of getting along with paying off that debt, doing all those things, having investors to pay back as well. Um, it's been a, a lot of uh, responsibility for one person to bear, um, but it's something that I feel like my entire life has prepared me to do. Um, I know I kind of talked all over the place with everything, um, but that was kind of in the grand view of, you know, it, it took 10 years to be my own boss. It took almost a year for the business loan to go through. And now I've hit uh, my two year anniversary. So 13 years in, 
Um, some days, because I'm always in the battlefield and the trenches, I don't step back and realize what I've done in that amount of time. Um, but I think it is really important um, because of my upbringing being forced on, you know, there was one way to navigate. This was the only way you were going to be successful. This was the only way people are going to take you seriously. And I kind of went against that. Um, and I had a lot of people that kind of made me feel like I was wasting my life. Heck, I even doubted that I was doing that as well. Um, but I stuck to my guns. Um, and even to Tim and I were talking, uh, I took over this business kind of in the peak of the pandemic. Um, and so the bank said I was either the smartest man alive or the dumbest man. Um, and I like stood there for a second. And I was like, okay, I think I'm going to be okay. Um, and luckily everybody got dogs during the pandemic. Everybody had to return back to work. So everything's kind of skyrocketed, which is why the business has been able to grow. Um, I've put in a lot of work, um, you know, with, the branding with the teammates with uh putting work into the facility i've gotten about three thousand of the 7500 square feet renovated um, but it's a process because we're open 24 7 i never want to do anything that's going to jeopardize the quality of care for the dogs um especially since we are open 24 7. um so eventually i'll have to get that uh figure out that little hurdle down the road um, but yeah that's kind of everything in a nutshell so i appreciate you guys listening to me and i'm happy to answer any questions? Yeah. So, um, quick hot, did you design your website or did you just take it over from someone and then ah, thank designing you. the website? You only have one more. So I did that myself. So again, it's really going into things and just being willing to learn and asking for help. I have a couple of friends that work in some graphic design stuff. So I would just ask them, um, you know, does this look correct? Is there any advice or like guidance you can give me? Um, I had a lot of people who were kind enough to kind of help tweak things um, because we're friends and not charge me anything. But that's the thing with taking over business. Everything is so nickel and dimed that I pretty much was like, well, I'm going to have to figure it out. Um, same with the budgeting and accounting and payroll and all those things I had to learn on the fly. And unfortunately, I made some big mistakes the first year when it came tax time. Um, I definitely will not make those mistakes again. Um, so I'm hoping this year we're a little bit better. How many, how many kennels do you have? Because I see as you rotate through, it looks pretty big. Yeah, so our hotel itself is 2,000 square feet. Um, so we can accommodate 50 dogs per night. Um, I work a little bit differently. A lot of daycare facilities allow sibling dogs to sleep together. So if it's like a family of five dogs, they can all be kind of crammed in a room. People typically do that because they're like, oh, we can make more money. Again, I'm about the quality of care, not the quantity. Um, so I would rather know that the dogs are safe overnight. They have ample room. Obviously, if they're little dogs and they sleep side by side, I just have the parents sign an additional waiver. Um, but our max is 50. Um, and then our daycare dogs, our max um, is 60 per day. But if it's like a holiday like it was, I'll limit daycare. I make sure we never have more than 75 dogs. Even though the facility is 7,500 square feet, about 3,000 are play yard, 1,500 outdoors. I always want to make sure the dogs have plenty of room. Um, so I'd rather, you know, kind of cut back, make sure the team's not stressed. The dogs get that same type of care, especially during this crazy time. Um, so yeah, 50 in the hotel and then 60 on the floor. <laughs> I just want to say congratulations. Oh, thank you. Dream come true. Thank yeah. you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Well, no, that's very good for me to have said. Um, so I am on Northeast City Second. I'm five minutes from the PDX Airport. Um, I feel very fortunate with that location, um, especially because the building was built in 1948 and they kind of got grandfathered into having an outdoor space. Most doggy daycares aren't permitted to have that, which is a big draw of why people come to us because they don't want their dog when they're on a two week vacation to be stuck indoors 24 seven or not be able to go potty outside like they would at home. So after going through the process of getting a business loan for the very first time, what would you recommend to other people who are applying for a uh, business loan for the first time? Yeah, great question. Um, taking it day by day, you get overwhelmed with 60, 80 pages of documents, things you have to review. And I don't know legal jargon. There were lots of things I would read. I'd read twice, three times and be like, I have no idea what I just read. Um, and so my broker was very fortunate. She was with the original owners and then worked with both of us. 
she kind of held my hand and was like, this is how you should do it. This is the priority. Take it week by week, day by day, because I was trying to do it all at once to stay ahead of it. But by doing that, I was making mistakes that then cost us, oh, you actually didn't sign this 34th page. And because of that, now we're delayed a month. Um, so really just taking your time, asking for help, not being afraid. Um, I was telling the brokerage, I was trying to be persistent and not annoying with how many questions I asked or phone calls I got on. But I really wanted to make sure it was something this big that I was as knowledgeable as possible and wasn't just signing things away without actually understanding it and not being afraid to, you know, embarrass myself or not feel like I'm the most intelligent person in the room because I'm not. Um, and I think being able to admit that and ask for help, that was the biggest, biggest thing for this journey. Perfect. Um, just uh, a question uh, on the cost, how much is it per night? If it's and how much per day is it per night? Yeah. Um, so our daycare, we just increased the prices after three years. Um, so we went from 50 a night to 53 per night um, for one dog. Any additional dog in a pet family is 43. So you save 10 per night. Um, if you stay with us for more than two weeks, we have a discounted rate as well. Um, and then as far as daycare goes, it's 38 per single visit. Um, it can be as long or as short as you want, but we do just a flat rate. Um, we always have all of our dogs check in in the morning. Um, that way they go on the ride of the day energy wise. Um, it really only takes one dog, one puppy to change the entire dynamic for 80 <laughs> dogs. And we always try to control the chaos um, is what we always say. Um, but we have various packages going from 5, 10, 20. That makes it as low as 32 per day. Um, we do have a lot of pet families or parents that travel and their dogs with us every single week. Um, so when there's an ice storm or something like that, we're kind of necessary to open otherwise their dog isn't being taken care of um, and dogs that come to us on a monday tuesday wednesday schedule or vice versa um, so it is kind of crazy the how things are set up and how things go but definitely it's a good amount of savings if it is something that you need to use on a regular basis pictures of all the dogs loose in there curiosity of how do you keep the dog from packing up and Yeah. Um, so all of our dogs go through what we call an evaluation process. So it's a meet and greet where we get to talk to the parent. Everybody has to fill out a form. So we do like a pre-screening. And if there's any kind of red flags, I'll then call and get more information. We had one client submit saying that their great Dane likes to sit on little dogs. <laughs> and I went, okay, let's follow up on that. What is, and then she was like, oh, just with our younger dog, like they have that kind of relationship, but he's not just like going around sitting on dogs. Um, Cause how we work a little bit differently too, is we have an area called Toyland, which is where our teeny tiny dogs and seniors hang out. But otherwise everybody gets to roam and be together. Um, so our kind of standards and what we look for are a little bit higher than some other daycares because they are all mixed together. And obviously larger dogs can cause more damage than a little dog. Um, although I've met quite a few chihuahuas that would say otherwise. Um, but yeah, so all of those dogs go through that process. Once we do the pre-screening, we'll meet with the parents. Um, and then I'm always the one that's on the floor with them. Um, and I will slowly one by one introduce different breeds, temperaments, sizes, kind of gauge. I have three dogs myself, so I always use them for the evals because I know how they're going to react. I have a puppy that's going to approach with that high energy. I have a, a girl dog that's a little bit sassy. And then I have a senior dog um, that is a little bit more chill. So it gives me a good kind of encompass before I start using any other daycare dogs. Um, but once the dog um, gets comfortable, we'll just kind of keep introducing dogs until the point of they decide, do they want to be with the small dogs all day? Do they want to come out on the main yard? Sometimes what we have to do is when our hotel dogs go in for feeding, we'll clear out half of the main yard and then do another slow introduction. So it's a big process. They hang out with us for the entire day. Sometimes a dog is too overwhelmed. We'll say, hey, let's cut it short. Let's do a second eval. Um, it really is kind of a process. All dogs are just as individual as people are. So it's learning their behaviors, their unique personalities. Um, and then also being overstaffed as well. Um, when I first started this industry, I would be by myself with 60 plus dogs. Um, and it was up to me to manage, to control, to keep eyes, which just isn't humanly possible. Um, even with having three teammates on the floor, sometimes it doesn't feel like it's enough eyes when things are going on. Um, but it's everybody learning the dogs, learning their unique personalities. 
Um, of course, any dogs that show any signs of aggression aren't welcomed, but dogs, you know, they have good days, they have bad days. Sometimes they're a little bit grumpy. Sometimes they're tired. Sometimes the parents are moving. And so their uncertainty, they're a little bit more edgy. Um, so we'll give them enrichment breaks in the hotel. Um, and this is something that I don't charge for, but we have puzzle supplements, uh, peanut butter Kong, some type of mental enrichment to get that energy out in another way, make sure they're satisfied and filled and then slowly reintroduce them again. Um, so it is kind of a, a having the experience for 13 years now, having a team of everybody who has been in this industry for four to also 10 years, um, that kind of helps with managing groups, but it is just always scanning. Even if you're loving a dog, you're watching them, seeing if the play groups are escalating. We do constant training on dog behavior, different techniques, um, safety protocols. Um, so again, doing something that I love that is a constant requirement of making sure we're all on our best so the dogs are in the best care possible. I know that was a long-winded response to your answer, but it, there's a lot that goes into it, essentially. So what is your capacity for the maximum capacity for your uh, facility? Uh, so our maximum, so this is what's interesting is Oregon doesn't have a set guideline of this is how many dogs you can have in your facility. So it's pretty much up to the owner and they will tell, um, for me, uh, Multnomah County, you know, this is our max. Um, and so for myself, um, based off my experience being, you know, having a year, uh, my first year kind of gauging everything, I decided with speaking to the team because there's certain decisions I make that they don't know all the nitty gritties. Um, and then there's lots of things that I try to include them on. I want it to be a collaborative process. I never want to do anything that's jeopardizing the dogs or the teammates. And so we all kind of collectively came together and said, hey, 80 would be the max if those extra five dogs are small and they're in our Toyland area, but otherwise 75. So that's why with holidays, I limit daycare. So if we're at our full 50 capacity, we can't have more than 25 daycare dogs. Um, I'll close as well on certain days. Um, just to make sure the focus is our borders. Again, it's always the quality of care, not the quantity. And a lot of facilities will be like, oh, we can do 100. Um, and that just isn't why I got into this, this field. That segues into one question we have for online versions. Oh, perfect. Do you have regular openings or do you have to book well in advance? Uh, so with the industry changing, um, it used to be very... Uh, you could book the day before. So we're like a hotel for humans. So we have our peak seasons and our low seasons. Any major holiday you always want to book. Now we're about two to three months in advance. Um, and then summertime, lots of travel, typically on the weekends. During the week is never an issue unless, again, it's a major holiday. Um, but it just depends on the seasons. Um, as our numbers kind of increase, we're about to get to a point where maybe we won't start welcoming new dogs to eval with us. Uh, during certain times, because I want to make sure that clients still have that flexibility to come to us when they have last minute trips or family emergencies. Um, so it's kind of something I'm figuring out as we go. Um, but yeah, boarding, you can always book on the same day. We always are daycare. We always have space for that. The system will tell you if we're full. Um, but boarding, definitely, the sooner you know, the better. You can always make adjustments or cancel it, but it's better to have it and not. Need it. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you all for listening to me ramble. I really appreciate it. Yeah.